Islander center Brock Nelson is coming off a career year, but what can he do for an encore? And we take a look at free agent to be Philip Forsberg and discuss how he would fit into the Islanders if the Islanders were to sign him. All that and a lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Thursday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today and be part of the Locked On Islanders family. And thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and that does include YouTube. So check us out and subscribe there, and the new episodes will be in your box at midnight every weekday. We have got a lot to discuss on today's show, but first... If you've got something Islanders related on your mind, you have a question for us, uh, a comment about something we discussed on the show, or maybe a topic you'd like us to talk about, feel free to send us an email, the email address LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to talk about you and mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings throughout this busy and pivotal offseason, including free agency, trade rumors, and of course, the upcoming NHL draft. So we're going to start off today by discussing the Islanders' leading goal scorer from this past season as we continue our player-by-player look at the Islanders. And uh, that means we're going to talk about Brock Nelson. Nelson having a career-high 37 goals this season, even though he missed 10 games due to assorted injuries, COVID, what have you. 37 goals, that was a career high. 59 points. That was also a career high. Uh, He was a minus five plus minus, which actually matched what he did the previous season. And he had 33 penalty minutes, which is actually the third highest uh, total of his career. And he's now, believe it or not, been a New York Islander for nine seasons. Nelson originally drafted by the Islanders in the first round with the 30th overall pick all the way back in 2010, but he's been with the big club full-time since 2013, 2014. And, you know, since that time, he's put together six 20-plus goal seasons, and he would have had another one easily uh, in 2020-2021 had the schedule been longer. Uh, He only played 56 games, had 18 goals. So he's been... I think unquestionably the Islanders most consistent player overall. He had 171 shots on goal this year, 279 shot attempts, his shooting percentage, a career high by a wide margin, 21.6. And just to give you an idea of how good that was, his previous high was 15.8 all the way back in 2015, 2016. And for both of the previous two seasons, he was a smidge under 15, 14.9 shooting percentage. Realistically, this statistic tells me it will be difficult, not impossible, but difficult for Brock Nelson to duplicate the 37 goals he put up this season because the shooting percentage is just so much higher than his previous numbers. Now, three, uh, he did add 11 goals on the power play and three assists. So you see, you give Brock Nelson a little extra time and a little extra space, he really gets the job done. He's, he's very average in the faceoff circle. Brock Nelson winning 49.4% of his draws this year, same number as a year ago. For his career, he's at 47.7. Only once in nine seasons did he win more than 50% of his face-offs. So that's 
again, not the strong point of Brock Nelson's game. But what you're going to get from Nelson is someone who is not afraid to shoot the puck. He actually attempted 279 shots this year, uh, which, you know, is uh, a nice number. You're talking about th between three and four per game, and he had about two and a half shots on goal per game on average. And look, he's not the most physical player. He had only 31 hits, but Brock Nelson will get back, play defense, and he averaged 17 minutes and 40 seconds per game on ice over the course of the 72 games. To me, Brock Nelson is going to be your number two center again, almost certainly, next season. And he is right now 30 years old. He'll be 31 on October 15th, which should be just after the start of the season. Brock Nelson still in his prime at this stage of his career. At 6'4", 210, he's got you know good height, decent size, and he is you know a bona fide top six forward. Uh, will he match last year's goal total? Probably not. But you know what? If he could play 75 plus games and give you 30 goals, which would still be a seven goal drop from last year, uh, I think most Islander fans would take that, especially if the Islanders do add that player, uh, who everybody, you know, is rumored that they're going to get that, that sniper who can really put the puck in the net that could take some of the pressure off your Anders Lee's and your Brock Nelson's and really help. Now, Nelson with the 37 goals, he had two hat tricks this year. Uh, one on November 4th in Montreal, a four goal effort in a six to two win. And then a hat trick at home on March 19th against the Dallas stars. Obviously the Islanders won both of those games. And for Brock Nelson, that was his third and fourth career hat trick and his first ever four goal game. To me, Brock Nelson, you know, not the kind of guy who makes headlines nationally, but he is the kind of guy who in my mind really is a valuable Islander. And, you know, if you were to list the core players on the Islanders right now, I think Brock Nelson is a part of it. He is a player that Lou Lamorello is not going to want to part with. And, you know, whether he ends up uh, getting another player who could help set him up, we know we need the puck moving defenseman. We know we need the other uh, goal scorer. All of these things can help uh, counteract the fact that you know, he's not going to most likely be able to match that shooting percentage that he had a year ago, uh, which, you know, was just so far above his other numbers. So look for a comparable season from Brock Nelson next year, a, probably a little lower in the goal scoring category, but overall should be another solid season. And if he stays healthy, that's a big deal for the New York Islanders. They need him and they need him to continue to be that indispensable part of the offense that he always has been. We've got more to discuss on today's show. We're going to talk about a potential free agent who's out there, Philip Forsberg, now of the Nashville Predators. He would be a spectacular addition to the Islanders. We'll talk about that and a lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Athletic Greens. This is a, a product that I started taking because I really hate taking a lot of pills and vitamins, and I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. Well, I've been taking this stuff for about two months now, and I love it. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has a kind of mild, tropical taste that I look forward to each morning. And look, this stuff is really, really good. It's with one delicious scoop of AG1. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adoptogens to help you start your day right. 
This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All of these things. And it's lifestyle friendly. Whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, it contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. And it costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop and a cup of water every day and that's it. There's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look after your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. We have an important favor to ask you. We've put together a survey so we could learn more about our listeners like you and make your favorite Locked On podcasts even better. This is your opportunity to tell us what you like and what you don't like about Locked On podcasts. So go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey right now to get started. It won't take very long and everyone that completes a survey can qualify for a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards. To take our audience survey, go to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey, and thanks for your help. We're going to continue our series of potential players that the Islanders could be interested in. We know they're looking for a puck-moving defenseman. We also know they're looking for that sniper, and one sniper, a highly regarded player, who is going to be, unless he signs a new deal with the Nashville Predators, he's going to be an unrestricted free agent this offseason is center Philip Forsberg. Now, Forsberg right now is 27 years old. He'll be 28 in August. Again, a player who is still in the prime of his career. And even if you give him a seven-year deal, that's going to take you through to he's about 34, 35, right about when he'll really start to slow down. And Like Brock Nelson, who we discussed in our first segment, Philip Forsberg is coming off a career year. 42 goals and 84 points in 69 games. And again, you have to consider that while he may not match that 42 goal total, just like Brock Nelson, uh, his shooting percentage this year, 18.6, significantly higher than his previous career high, which was 14.5. But again, let's say that he gets knocked down to 35 goals next year if he stays healthy. You're still talking about a huge contributor. Now, here's one of the issues with Philip Forsberg. He is not a bad defensive player. He was a plus 12 this past year, uh, scored 10 goals on the power play and basically set up 17 goals on the power play. He'll help the Islanders in that department, and they need it. Uh, Although, again, we, as we've mentioned, the power play did come up bigger uh, later on in the season. He also had eight game-winning goals, and he has 41 game winners over the course of his career, which is eight complete NHL seasons. And when you consider that injuries shortened a few of those seasons in the middle, Uh, those numbers are even more impressive. He is clutch, and that is a good thing. Not afraid to shoot the puck. Uh, He attempted 424 shots in 69 games this year. Only 226 of them were on goal. So the good news is, here's a guy who's not shy about shooting. And the Islanders could use a player or two with skills who are going to bring more of a shoot first mentality. But here's the problem. Philip Forsberg is a center and the Islanders right now are pretty deep down the middle. You have Matthew Barzal, you have Brock Nelson, you have JG Pajot, and then you have Casey Sezikis. Now, would Philip Forsberg still be the number one 
uh, center, if the Islanders were to sign him, yeah, the Swede would go to the top of that list. But somebody on that list would have to move from center. And whether you move Pajot to a wing, I don't know. He's such a good face-off guy. Do you, you move Barzal, who's not a great face-off guy, to uh, the wing and then have Forsberg, you know, get set up by Barzi? Uh, that's a little tough. Nelson is really a natural center. Be tough to, to move him. Overall, you're, you're talking about a situation where – at center is just not the Islanders' biggest need. Now, the other thing that has to be taken into consideration is the cost. You know you're going to have to sign him to the maximum contract, uh, maximum term, seven, eight years. You know you're going to have to sign him to big bucks. And if the Islanders were to go out and add Philip Forsberg, you're really sort of hampering the team's ability to also add a veteran, experienced, puck-moving defenseman. Now, if you think Noah Dobson is ready to be the number one puck-moving defenseman and the guy you're going to acquire is sort of that complementary second puck-moving defenseman, maybe you can spend less money to get him. And if you bring in Forsberg, you could still acquire a quality puck-moving D-man, uh, just not a star. And maybe that is sort of better. Maybe you're thinking, hey, to me, Noah Dobson is still going to get better. He's, you know, barely able to buy a drink uh, legally in New York at this point in his life. He still is on the upswing. And maybe I can afford to get a moderately priced, uh, you know, defenseman via trade or free agency and spend the big bucks on Philip Forsberg. In a lot of ways, Forsberg has what this team needs. The shoot first mentality, the unquestionable skill, the hands. He's not uh, going to hurt the team significantly defensively. He's clutch. He's got playoff experience. He is the kind of player who this team really could use. But He's not a perfect fit because of the cost involved and the position he plays. So uh, would I be doing cartwheels of joy if Philip Forsberg signed with the Islanders? Absolutely. Would the acquisition of a Philip Forsberg set the team up to make a trade to maybe free up a little cap space and add another piece? Yeah, it could. So to me, I wouldn't dismiss it. But I will say that the, the cost of acquiring Forsberg is going to be a lot of money. And whether Lou Lamorello is willing to do that or not, not really sure. As for, you know, Lane Lambert, one thing you do have to remember, uh, Lane Lambert has a little bit of experience uh, because Philip Forsberg when he came into this league, who was his coach? Barry Trotz. So there's some familiarity with sort of the, the, the basic system that the Islanders are looking to play and sort of with the Lane Lambert, Barry Trotz coaching tree. And that may be another plus for Philip Forsberg. We'll see what the Islanders end up doing, but I do want to mention that Forsberg is a potential acquisition for the New York Islanders this season, even if it is a little bit of a long shot. We've got more to get to on today's show. When we come back, a former goalie is our Islanders' birthday of the day. That and more still to come on today's Locked on Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Folks, if you're like me, you love a chewy, chocolatey brownie. What about a caramel brownie with caramel swirled on top? It is so good. But what if I told you you could have all that chewy, chocolatey deliciousness plus 17 grams of protein? Well, you're in luck because caramel brownie bars 
are available at Built.com right now. And you got to act fast because these are a fan favorite. Forget about dessert. These are better than dessert. Plus the macros are unreal. Just 130 calories, but they pack 17 grams of protein with only four grams of sugar. I would replace a regular brownie with Built's Caramel Brownie Bar in a heartbeat. And the best part, Caramel Brownie Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. With Built, you don't have to sacrifice tasty for healthy. You can have both. And all Built Bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Go to Built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And uh, we're a day early here, but Friday will be the 36th birthday of former Islanders goalie Chad Johnson, the native of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, originally drafted by the Penguins in the fifth round back in 2006, spent four seasons at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, uh, and then made his NHL debut with the Rangers in 2009-2010, played for the Coyotes and the Bruins before becoming an Islander during the 2014-2015 season. Uh, after that, played for Buffalo, Calgary, St. Louis, and Anaheim, and hung up his skates after the 2018-2019 season. So one year with the Islanders, and it was one of those years where Rick DiPietro was hurt. I know that doesn't eliminate a lot of years in, in Rick's uh, career, but uh, all jokes aside, uh, he was brought in and Chad Johnson, sort of one of those guys who he can give you some solid play, but he was very, very good in the AHL and kind of a solid backup at best in the NHL. Played in 192 NHL games, finished his career with a respectable 2.73 goals against average and a save percentage of 907. We're going to look at one of his better games with the Islanders. We're going to go to the TD Garden up in Boston, October 23rd, 2014. Islanders with Chad Johnson in goal. The Bruins with Nicholas Svedberg as the Isles and Bruins face off. In the first period, the Islanders go up early. Franz Nielsen. His first from Josh Bailey and Nikolai Kuhleman at 621. Isles won Boston nothing. Milan Lucic, however, ties it for the Bruins late in the period. His first from Seth Griffith and David Krejci at 1821. After 20 minutes, Isles won, Bruins won. Kyle Oposo gives the Islanders the lead in the second period. His third from John Tavares and Brian Strait just a minute and a half into the second and then Cal Clutterbuck makes it 3-1 to one Isles, his first of the year. Matt Martin and Nick Letty getting the assists on that one at 9-27. In the third, Bruins make it close. Chris Kelly, his second, from Carl Soderberg and Louis Erickson at 9-49. But Chad Johnson shut the door after that. He made 30 saves in a game in which the Islanders outshot the Bruins 38-32 to for Chad Johnson the win, a 9.38 save percentage, and a, a very solid performance on the road in a game that featured only two penalties all game, and both of them came in the first period. So Chad Johnson, sort of that journeyman goalie who always was in, de in demand, but never really the guy. He was really the starter only one season in his career in the NHL. Uh, with the Buffalo Sabres after leaving the Islanders. And he did not not such a bad job. He had a good season with Buffalo uh, that year. Chad Johnson is our Islanders' birthday of the day. We wish him a very happy 36th birthday, which is on Friday. As for Brock Nelson, I I'll tell you, I don't know how many more years he'll be an Islander. I think it's Fairly safe to say he'll be back with the team next year and will play a major role next year. But give him another year or two of highly productive play. And I think you're starting to talk about Brock Nelson, where if there was an Islanders uh, Hall of Fame, I think Brock Nelson 
really becomes a candidate for that. Now I know there is, you know, that wall of honor outside the locker room. I think, you know, after he retires, Brock Nelson, if he has a couple of more, you know, 30 goal seasons, he really could be a candidate to be considered an all time Islanders player. We will be back tomorrow. We'll talk a little more about some draft or free agency prospects, and we will look at the season that Anders Lee had last year and look ahead to what we can expect from Lee in 2022, 2023. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. You can hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts and I do host the Monday edition of Locked On NHL, and I co-host the Friday edition with Rachel Donner every week. So definitely check it out. Some great content there. Keep you up to date on all the latest goings on around the NHL. That's going to do it for today's episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.